On the way to putting this variometer together, uh, I had some very good questions and comments regarding how to make the electrical connections between the shaft and the coils. And let me zoom in. This slip ring, it's brass slip ring with this uh, connection soldered to it, is what I ended up doing. Uh, let me show you a couple other alternatives and a few ways to implement those alternatives that people suggested or asked about just so we uh, cover all our bases. The method that will create the least amount of static noise when you turn the shaft, because anytime you have a connection like this and there's friction in there, there's a risk of, uh, there's, a, there's a risk of noise, is to use uh, a coil like this, just a spiral piece of metal. And this is how Westinghouse did their variometers. They just made a nice fluffy coil, if you will. I know fluffy is not usually the right word, but and you put it on here. Now you notice I put these tabs on the later models, and that's to mount this. That's exactly why that's there. So you can easily mount it. Just you can pinch it between the layers, um, or you can attach it below, screw it on, uh, however you want to do it. Uh, and then the center part, you would. I'll get my finger out of the way. You can curl this around there, the shaft, solder it. Uh, on a bigger shaft, you can put a tiny screw, uh, anything like that to make a good electrical connection to the uh, shaft. The drawback, as I already pointed out, is this is kind of stiff. This is supposed to be pure nickel. Nickel doesn't work harden. It, you can bend it back and forth a lot before it breaks a lot. And this is, turns out to be nickel plated steel and everything I ordered online that claimed to be pure nickel was nickel plated steel. Uh, where were we? Okay, so you attach this to the shaft and there's just a solid connection between the things and that's gonna create the least amount of noise. So the trick here is to build one of these coils that is very soft, maybe brass would be better. Um, I couldn't find any brass that was terribly thin. It was like 0.2 mils. Uh, this is 0.1. It's still way too stiff. Uh, I also had some other ideas. Let me zoom in on that and show you what I got. Another idea was to use solder wick because it, uh, no, it's, it's very soft. It doesn't have a lot of spring back. You won't have to fight it and you won't have to put in like tensioners on the shaft to keep the shaft from, you know, springing backwards. Uh, however, it doesn't have a, as very much lateral stability, so it won't hold a coil shape very nicely. So my thought there was to slice up a pop bottle, and it's clear, so it's hard to see. Slice up a pop bottle about the width of this uh, solder wick, and put that in boiling water to get it to hold a, a coil shape, and then glue the solder wick to it. And that would probably work. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it would work. It's not going to be first class. It's not going to look great, but you know, it's uh, probably a functional solution to getting that done. The last thing is to use motor brushes. And I ordered some, as you can see here, this one I tore apart out of another motor. This one I ordered online. This is the smallest one I could find, but I know they make them smaller. And the different thoughts I had uh, on these, I thought I could just take a brass bar, put it across here and mount this on there like that. Yeah, it would be good to have one on each side so there was symmetrical force on the shaft. Um, with this one, I could mold in a plastic box on the, uh, on the uh, core here and then put a spring in it and put tension on it that way. One solution I found works very well for the smaller variometer, if you can use that, and that is this. This is a replacement set of brushes for a small motor. Let me show you where it comes off of, like this. And yeah, I think they are less than a dollar each, 80 cents or something each. Um, and it comes with the brushes. It also comes with a little bearing on the end of it. You can see the bearing there. Uh, so if you happen to be using a 3.2, I think it is, millimeter shaft like this brass, uh, it's just perfect fit. Also, the luck continues. This, if I remove the brass uh, bushing that I had in there originally, 
then there's notches in the side right here that fit right over these tabs on both sides and this thing will just slide on <laughs> so wow uh yeah if i would have done that originally i don't think i would have gone any farther <laughs> i would have stopped with this one but yeah just uh, super super luck here that uh, that works uh, the drawback is I can't find it for the eight millimeter shaft for the bigger one. So if you can get by with this little variometer, that's a super simple solution for, uh, making connections between the inner and outer coils. Okay. Well, that was it, uh, as far as answering, uh, questions and comments that I'd received about, uh, these contacts with the variometer. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your home DIY crystal radio and variometer experimentations.